Okay folks, welcome back to my Raspberry Pi and Rainbow series. And in the last video, what we did is made a simple delay effect and uploaded that delay effect to a Raspberry Pi and then got it working from the web interface. And so what I want to do in this video is really use the exact same patch with those same parameters. And in this case, I've already exported that to the Raspberry Pi. And I'd like to then make some pots connect those potentiometers to an analog to digital converter and then read those values from the Raspberry Pi. So in other words, have a wired connection from a breadboard that's got some pots and a switch or a button on it as well and then read those values into the Pi and send those values to our rainbow patch that's running on the Pi. So we're creating a physical interface for our rainbow patch. So to do this, I've got a number of things here that you can see. I've got, of course, the Raspberry Pi and a power supply. I've got a breadboard. I've got a button. I've got five capacitors, which are all 0.1 UF and ceramic. I've got a chip. Now, this chip is an analog to digital converter. It's an MCP 3008. It's eight channels and 10 bits per channel. Then I've got four potentiometers. They're all 10K linear or B. Then I've got some knobs for those potentiometers. And then I've got just some breadboard wiring that you can see here, different lengths. And I've also got these wires here that are also breadboard wires, but you can kind of see one end is a jack and one end is a socket. So this is useful for going from the 40 pin connector on the Pi into the breadboard So to do this, what we're going to use is, um, as I said, the SBI ports on the Raspberry Pi. And we're going to use those SBI ports to connect to the MCP. And then from there, we're going to read the pots, as well as reading the button from a general purpose um, pin. And then we're going to send all of that as OSC messages locally on the Pi. And to itself basically so that it gets picked up by the rainbow patch so a couple of libraries that we're going to use to achieve this first one is pi liblo which is a just a very lightweight um, implementation of osc which runs on python and then we're also going to use gpio0 which is just included with the raspberry pi build and you can kind of see here, and I'll put a link to this in the text. You can kind of see here we've got a list of all the devices, input devices that are supported by this library. And these are all basically different analog to digital converters. All of these ADCs have um, different numbers of channels on them, as well as uh, different bit depths. So it might be 10 bit or 12 bit. And uh, most of them can do uh, either single-ended or differential conversion from their inputs. So in this case, we're just going to run these four potentiometers uh, single-ended inputs into the ADC and then go from there. Now I've chosen the MCP 3008 because it's 10 bits, 8 channels. So we could have up to 8 of these potentiometers plugged into it and being read into a rainbow patch quite easily. Now 10 bit, because I found that with 12 bit, there's just too much noise on a breadboard, which doesn't really make uh, 12 bit worth using in this context. So 10 bit is perfectly fine. If we were to make a PCB and um, you know, have a proper grounding plane and stuff like that, then we would have a better res resolution potentially than just 10 bit. Okay, so I think the first thing to do is to set up our breadboard. And I'm going to start off with the MCP. That's what it's going to be based around. And I'm just going to put this one onto the breadboard like this. And you can see we've got the indent here, which means that pin 1 is to the left of the in indent, or just below the indent, just there. So pin 1 going around there. Thank you. 
and let's have a look at some of the basics of um, how this chip is laid out. You can kind of see we've got the uh, layout just here and pins 1 to 8 are just the analog inputs coming from potentially our pots or other sensors. And then pin 9 to 16 takes care of the SBI connections our analog and our digital power requirements. So in this case we're going to run this chip from 3.3 volts and so um, VREF and uh, VDD are going to be shared on the 3 volt 3 bus and analog ground and digital ground are going to be shared on just the ground going to Raspberry Pi. Then we've also got a serial clock which on the Raspberry Pi is going to be connected to GPIO 11 which is uh, SBI serial clock that we can see there. And then we've got digital in on the MCP, which is going to go and be connected to MOSI or Master Out Slave In, GPIO 10. And then we've got digital out on the pot, which is going to be connected to MISO, so Master In, Slave Out. And then we've also got um, chip select, so that's active low as it usually is. That's going to come from GPIO 8 which is um, chip enabled zero of the SBI bus on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to make my power connections last but let's just set up the rest of the breadboard first including the pots. Oh and the last connection is going to be just the uh, the button which I'm going to connect to GPIO 26 um, and then between the button and ground. Okay, let's go ahead and set up, um, set this up. I'm going to have uh, just the red and the blue buses for my power, of course. So I'm actually going to use one of my 0.1 UF capacitors. And it's going to go between VDD and the ground bus on the chip. I've had a bit of noise issues with this setup. So that's one doing that. Then let's connect up some ground connections on the chip. So you can see we've got digital ground. Analog ground. Like that. And then So have a, a power, we've got VDD going to 3 volt 3. And then VREF also going to 3 volt 3. Like that. So we can see there we've got Digital ground, analog ground, that black one, so both of those are black. Then we've got VDD, which is orange, and VREF, which is orange. Then there's a capacitor sitting in between VDD and ground. Next up, let's set up the pots. So with the pots, basically, At least with this size of pot, they're going to go like this. And we just want to do 3 volts to one of the outside legs, ground to the other outside leg, and then the middle leg is going to go to the input channel on the MCP. So very standard sort of stuff. So again, I'm just going to be using the red and the blue buses. Like that. Just to set up my four pots.
like that. Then I'm going to place the button onto the breadboard. Now with this button, which you can see just down here, one side of the button, it's just a single pole, single, uh, single throw button, one side of the button is going to go to ground and the other side is going to go um, eventually to GPIO 26 on the Pi. So I'll just connect the ground up. Like that. Now, I found that there is a bit of noise with the pots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in these 0.1 UF capacitors as well in a moment. But before I do that, let's run some cables from what are going to be the middle leg of the pot. So just these green cables. It's going to go to ADC inputs 0, 1, 2 and 3. So all of the orange wires are 3 volts, all of the black wires are ground, and all of these green wires are just the signal connections going from the pots to the channels 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now, as I said, going to add in these 0.1 UF capacitors, and they're just going to go in between ground and the middle leg of the pot. So it's going in between the black and the green for each pot. Like that. So I've got these four capacitors. And in each case they're going between the middle leg, which is green, to ground, which is black. Okay. Then go ahead and then set up these pots. Just going to put some knobs onto them like this. So I've got my four pots up here with the knobs on them. Then I can just place those four and you can kind of see there. That the outside legs are going to three volts and ground. And of course middle leg is going to analog input. that. Okay, so we've got all the basics of the breadboard set up. Let's go ahead and then bring the Raspberry Pi into the equation. I'm just going to unpower it while I do this step, just in case, you know. So looking at the Raspberry Pi header, ground is going to go to my blue bus on the breadboard. I'm just going to take the ground, which is pin labeled here, pin 6. Like that. And that's going to go to my blue bus on the breadboard. And then 3 volt 3, which is labeled as pin 1. It's going to go to my red bus on the blue on the red board. I'm just 
kind of the connectors facing away from each other. Like that. So purple is 3 volts 3, black is ground. Let's have a look at the other connections for the SPI bus. So, GPIO 10, which is here labelled as pin 19, is the SPI master out slave in. So it's the digital in pin on the MCP. So you can see here that's MCP pin 11. So it's just this yellow one here. So pin 11 on the MCP is going to go to pin 19. Okay, so pin 19 is going to, sorry, GPO 19, so uh, master, master out slave in is going to digital in. Digital out, on the other hand, which will be this green cable. It's going to go from GPIO 11, which is labelled as pin 23 on this Raspberry Pi header. Sorry, it's going to go from GPIO 9, which is labelled as pin 21 on this Raspberry Pi header, into um, digital out. So this is master in slave out. So this will be this green cable here. And then we've got the serial clock, which will make this white cable. So that's the next one over, which is uh, labelled GPIO 11 or pin 23 on the header. And this one will go into pin 11 on the, sorry, pin 13 on the MCP. And the final connection we have to make to the MCP is going to be to our chip select pin. So pin 10 on the MCP should go to GPIO 8, which is SPI chip enable pin 0. So it's uh, labelled 24 on the header.
like that. So this is going into pin 10 on the MCP. That's that grey cable just here. And then finally we just want to connect up the button. And so this will be this blue cable. And this will go from GPIO 26, which is pin 37 of the Raspberry Pi header. And you can see the, the button, one side is going to ground. So basically, it's just going to have a input pull up on that pin. So when we press the pin, we're going to record a high state. When we let go, it's going to be a low state. But we don't really have to worry about that because the library takes care of all that. So I'm just going to map these four pots to the first four parameters and then the dry wet parameter I want to map from the button so that when I press the button it'll uh, toggle to either 100% if I press it again it'll toggle to 0% so effectively making it a bypass button just to turn the effect on and off so with all of this in play let's have a closer look at um, booting up the Pi and then seeing the code that runs on it Okay, so what I'm going to do is open up a terminal window. And I've just got some commands here. Firstly, we're just going to SSH into the Pi. Like that. Just using the same password that I've had previously on this one, just a simple password. Okay, so there we are. So we're using two libraries for our code, um, but one of those we have to install. So um, PyLiblo we've got to install. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Yes, we want to continue. Then install the Pi version of it. Okay, then let's go ahead and make a new Raspberry Pi uh, text file using Nano. And I've got the code down here. We'll talk through it in a moment. I'm just going to copy it from this text file, paste it into here, and then Control S. We can save it. And so basically, let, let's just run through the, the code quickly. We're reporting two things from GPO0. So MCP3208, that should actually be... That still ends up the same anyway. Uh, 3208 from, uh, from GPO0. And also button. I'm also using uh, OSC. Now basically we're going to try and target ourselves but with port 1234 so we saw that in the last tutorial 
port number, IP address and port number for the OSC messages. Going to use pin 26 for a button. And we've just got a variable here for the button state. Little function for if we find out that the button's been pressed. And we're just inverting the value of the button state and then sending that new value as an OSC message. And you can kind of see here, sending it just either a 0 or a 1 to an address that's uh, rainbow slash instrument slash 0 slash parameters slash wet dry slash normalized. So the fact that it's wet dry comes from the max patch that our wet dry parameter has that name. So that's why that address is how it is. The rest of it is um, set by rainbow. So that's why it's wet dry there. It's going to print off uh, the button state if we want to. In fact, you know what, we could get rid of that if we wanted to, but that's alright. Now, whenever we have an event where the button has been pressed, what we're going to do is execute that function, that pressed function. Then we're going to set up some um, MCP objects for our pots, so channels 0, 1, 2 and 3, our 4 pots. And then while the program is running, or while the script is running, I'm just going to print out the values of pot 1, pot 2, pot 3, and pot 4, as well as the button state. We're then going to send as an OSC message to our IP, internal IP address, a local IP address. That same type of message part, you can see it's got a different parameter name here, so delay time, feedback, filter freak, and filter res. And all those values are normalized, so sending it to the normalized address. And that's because dot value from the MCP library, sorry, from GPI0, so the MCP um, API from the library, uh, just normalizes output from 0 to 1, or from minus 1 to 1 if you're dealing with a differential input. So in this case, each pot is going to be represented by the value range of 0 to 1, regardless of the bit depth of the conversion. Go ahead and save that. Control S, Control X to exit Nano, and then I have the feeling we might have to reboot. So let's do that. I'm just going to reboot the Pi. And then we can run the Python lib uh, Python script just by loading up that file. And then we've got all the values coming out. Now if I load up um, if I load up the parameters web interface, you can see there that if I turn, let's say, the first parameter, delay time, feedback, filter frequency, filter resonance, all of those are changing in the web interface. Now the button, <laughs> not sure why the button's not changing anything, but you can see the value is changing, so I would expect the sound to change as well appropriately. So the button's just going to toggle on off, all the other ones are just going to be mapped to the normalized value range. Like that. And that's it. So the next video is going to be all about how do we take this setup with the pots and the button and instead of having it physically wired to the Raspberry Pi, how do we run it as its own little OSC um, server uh, wirelessly sending that data to the Raspberry Pi.